One of the great psychological diseases of the 20th century, if you remember, was low self-esteem. It was a great disease, really, because if you had low self-esteem, you could get away with murder and nobody could say anything about it. No one had to have any accountability for their choices because, after all, you had low self-esteem. Rapists were let off because they had low self-esteem. Child abusers and spousal abusers, instead of given a, been given a, a prison sentence in jail, were sent to therapy because they had low self-esteem. And alcoholics, well, they were just excused and let to live in a low self-esteem, gin-infused haze. Let me help anyone with low self-esteem with some outstanding therapy that will solve your problem better than a double dose of Prozac. Ready? How dare you? How dare any of you have low self-esteem? Who do you think you are? Since when did God doze off at the switch and leave you in charge of the world? You, my friend, are a creation of the creator of the universe. You are clay being formed by the master potter. How dare you ever feel inferior to anyone or anything? When you were baptized, you were given faith and thereby you were connected to grace. You have been saved by grace through faith. And what does that look like? Well, St. Paul knew that this was going to be complicated. But he knew that this concept was so powerful for our lives that it had to be communicated. And so he gave us a picture. Christ is the head, and we are the body. That's how he described it to the Corinthians. We're all given the gift of faith. But we're not only given the gift of faith. We're given lots of other gifts as well, varied gifts, gifts that are given, that are important and precious and fit for each person's role in the body of Christ. No one is greater. No one is lesser. Each is gifted in a particular way for a particular service. St. Paul made the point so very clearly to the Corinthians. Even as the eye is neither greater nor lesser than the foot, so an individual Christian is neither greater nor lesser than any other Christian. To further explicate his point, St. Paul picked two pairs of people that were at extremes from one another. Jews and Greeks, slaves and free. Every Jew would have seen himself as superior to the Greek and vice versa. But the slave and free, that one's more important for us. The slave was somebody in that time who would have had low self-esteem. He would have seen himself as something less than a free person, less worthy, less valuable, less gifted. And when you and I think of ourselves as anything less, regardless of our circumstances, we are selling ourselves into slavery. How could an eye be jealous of a foot? It's an eye for Pete's sake. Of course, it's differently gifted from the foot. And likewise, the foot is differently gifted from the eye. It can do things that the eye could never imagine doing. We have each been given a gift and connected by grace to Jesus' body. So there is no room in this world for low self-esteem. In fact, what low self-esteem really is, is sin. Low self-esteem is saying that either God messed up or God is evil. Either God accidentally made you wrong, he made a mistake, he, he left something out, 
or God intentionally made you the way you are for the purpose of being me. Now, do you really believe that God, either by accident or un on purpose, failed to give you the gifts you need to do your work in Christ's body? No. Of course not. Thank you, Brandon. It's good to have you back. Long time no see. On the other hand, unlike a, an eye or a foot, they automatically do what they're supposed to do. We can intentionally fail to function. We can intentionally refuse to use our gifts. We can refuse to do what we're supposed to do as our part of the body of Christ, or we can choose to do a sloppy job of it. Maybe we figure out that we can cause pain to someone else by being a dysfunctional body part. Maybe we're just lazy and figure it's just too darn much work being a Christian. Or maybe Satan lures us away with promises of worldly pleasure of some sort. The reasons we fail to do our job in the body of Christ are legion, but I can guarantee you this. Every single reason is centered somewhere in sin. Why on earth would you refuse to do a job you've been given and gifted for except because of sin? If one fails to do his duty, the whole body suffers and causing the body of Christ to suffer obviously is always sin. You know, some people suffer year in and year out with what they think is low self-esteem. I've known people who are almost paralyzed by it. They literally refuse to do anything because they're so afraid they might do it wrong. They might make the wrong choice or someone else might be able to do it better. They moan and they fret and they worry and they spend their days listlessly staring out the window and wondering why they are so ill-equipped to live life. If you or someone you know has been suffering from low self-esteem, I have wonderful news for you. It is a misdiagnosis because there's no such thing. It's not anything so complex and sordid as low self-esteem. It's just plain old garden variety sin. And that's really good news. See, no one seems to really know what to do in the end with low self-esteem. Confront your father, confront your mother, uh, regressive psychoanalysis, mood elevating drug therapy, who knows, but nothing seems to work for very long, at least not permanently. And it seems that people who suffer from low self-esteem never really get much better. But sin? Sin's a different matter. We can cure sin. That's why it's such wonderful news that it doesn't exist. That it's just old garden variety sin. God has given us the privilege of repenting of sin. And not only that, but he sent the Holy Spirit into us through the baptismal waters to help us to be able to repent. We have a cure. Repent. Turn away from the weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Turn away from jealousy and insolence. Turn toward God through baptism. Come up here tonight and feed on the body and blood of Christ. <clears throat> How can one who carries within him the very body and blood of Christ ever have anything that approaches low self-esteem? It's ridiculous. What more could any of us be than to be the very vessel of God Almighty? Truth is that None of us ever have low self-esteem. We never did. We are the children of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it is completely incongruent for us to have low anything. We just have plain old sin. We've sinned by failing to use our gifts. We've been an eye who wouldn't see. Or been a foot who refused to take that next step. But have no fear.
Because we've been baptized. We have been filled with the Holy Spirit. We have the power to repent, to be forgiven, to move onward and upward from this moment on. And it's really important that we do that. Because this is the season of epiphany. This is the time when we focus on Christ being made manifest to the world. We, his body, reveal him to those who are not yet part of us or those who have been disconnected from us. When an unbeliever or a disconnected believer looks at us, he's looking at Jesus Christ. And when we do our part as the body of Christ, when we use our gifts, we let Christ's light shine into their darkness. Let your light shine. You don't have low self-esteem. How could you? 